coming on to join us, and that is just fine because I know there's a lot going on everywhere, especially with many districts being in session already. So no shortage of things to do, but it is 630. So we will call the meeting to order. It is September 10th, 2020, and this is a general meeting of the District 287 School Board. My name is Regina Neville. This meeting is live streamed on the District 287 YouTube channel. The meeting is also being recorded. The link to the recording will be posted on the District 287 website in the school board section. The public is always invited to share their thoughts and comments with the board. Uh, if you would like to do so, please complete the virtual meeting request form for written input that is available on the 287 website in the school board section. Written comments received by 4.30 p.m. on the day of the board meeting will be read at the beginning of the meeting. A couple of protocols. I um, would ask that people mute their microphones when they're not speaking, but a reminder to unmute um, if you would like to make a comment and in preparation for roll call votes. Um, board members are also invited to use the raise hand tool on board book premiere that is um, I think it shows in the same place for all of us toward the top of their computer monitor. And then that automatically tracks who would like to speak in the order in which they selected raise hand. I will also watch for a friendly wave, but my first, um, my first protocol is gonna be to look at raised hand. I'd like to thank Andrea Keene, our vice chair for stepping into the role of clerk this evening. Crystal Brackey is unable to be here. Since this is a virtual meeting, all votes will be taken by roll call vote led by Andrea. And at this time, I'd like to invite board member Ann Casey to read the mission for District 287. Thank you, Chair Neville. Um, the mission statement, um, the mission of Intermediate District 287 is to be the premier provider of innovative specialized services to ensure that each member district can meet the unique learning needs of its students. Thank you, Ann. And at this time, I'd like to have board member introductions. And Andrea, if you could call on each of us in alpha order uh, to ask us to introduce ourselves and the districts we represent. All right, my pleasure. Ruthie Dallas. I haven't seen her come on yet, so she may still be joining later. Okay. Adam Seidel. Here. Regina Neville. Yes, hi, I'm Regina Neville, and I'm representing the Edina Public School District. Michelle Coons. Hi, um, I represent Orono Schools. Michelle Coons. Heather Douglas. And I'm not sure that Heather has logged on yet either. All right. Next, we have Crystal Brackey, who is absent. She represents Richfield Public Schools. Sam Sant. And I don't believe Sam is with us yet either. All right. Next, we have the birthday girl, Ann Casey. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, birth yeah. happy birthday, Ann. <laughs> um, Ann Casey, uh, proudly representing St. Louis Park Public Schools. We'll give, we can give you a little Thank you. <laughs> well, you, got, you deserve a few jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we have me. I'm Andrea Keene. I'm representing Wyzetta Public Schools. And last we have Heidi Marty. Hi, I'm Heidi Marty representing West Tonka Public Schools. All right. Thank, Thank you, wait a minute. everyone. I'm last. I know. Oh. I have a, I have a, I have a, uh, oh, yeah, my <laughs> little bit wrong. Did I, did I call you, Steve? No, you didn't. Oh, I am <laughs> out of practice being the clerk. All right. Steve Adams. You're fired. Uh, <laughs> Steve Adams, uh, representing Hopkins School District. Thank you. All right. I think that's everyone. <laughs> um, I believe Sam is just joining us. So Sam, welcome. I uh, may be coming on and off. Sam, can you hear us? He may be working on an internet connection. 
we will circle back as needed. Andrea, thank you for calling uh, the roll for introductions. I'm going to introduce our staff members who are present. I'd like to welcome Tanya Allen, Ann Becker, Melissa Bradding, Juanine Denson M. Jeannie, Radius Guess, May Hawkins, Kim Helgeson, Superintendent Sandy Lewandowski, Ben McGross, Chad Maxa, Elizabeth Lodge Rogers, Julie Tarilla, and Dr. John Voss. I would also like to extend a special welcome and recognition for Rachel Hicks. Rachel has just earned her accreditation in public relations, the APR. And for anyone who may not be familiar with this, the APR, I know, big jazz hands, because this is a big deal. It is the mm -hmm. most widely recognized credential in professional communications. So it is a distinction of knowledge, skill, and personal commitment. And it signifies value across industries and geographic regions. So Rachel, congratulations. And we have always been grateful to have you on our team. And this is just nice to know that it is receiving the recognition that is due to you. So thank you, congratulations. Is there any member of the staff that I have accidentally missed who is also here this evening? Okay, and Sam, oh, I, oh, I saw that he joined and then I saw that he popped off. So I think he is probably struggling for a connection, um, but Sam Sant from Robbinsdale will likely be able to to join as soon as everything is established. So we'll move on with approval of the general meeting agenda. I'm going to walk through the agenda. Uh, we have our consent agenda this evening and followed by share the success and recognition with the back to school video. Our superintendent's report will include an anti-racist leadership pilot review led by Chad Maxa. Also an update on next steps for the 287 learning plan. Items 6.3 and 6.4 are newer to the agenda. Item 6.3 is the, are the presentation of the racial equity themes for 2021 um, presented by Director Radius Guess. And 6.4 is a presentation for information by May Hawkins regarding guaranteed energy savings program for North Education Center. There is no re instructional report this evening, nor is there a business services and labor relations report. For board business, we will have a chair report with a resolution regarding a hybrid meeting, a hybrid format for board meetings. And we'll close with an AMSD report and general district news and once around the, the table. Are there any additions to the agenda? Hearing none, I move that we accept the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Steve Adams. I invite board members to unmute their microphones in preparation for the roll call vote. Andrea, would you please call the roll? Yes. Um, Adams. Yes. Bracky, absent. Casey. Aye. Keen, yes. Dallas. Absent. Douglas, absent. Koontz. Aye. Marty. Aye. Neville. Aye. Excellent. All right, uh, Seidel. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, Juanine, is there any member of the audience or of the community who has asked to address the board this evening? No, we received anything this. Thank you. Next, we'll have approval of the consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda that anyone would like to have removed for separate consideration? Hearing none, is there a motion to accept the consent agenda as printed? So moved, Michelle Kuntz. Second by Steve Adams. Moved by Michelle Coons, seconded by Steve Adams. Andrea, would you please call the roll for approval of the consent agenda? And I invite board members to please unmute their mics for the roll call. Adams. 
Aye. Bracky, absent. Casey. Aye. Keen, yes. Dallas, absent. Douglas, absent. Koontz. Aye. Marty. Aye. Sant. I saw him rejoin. Sam Sant. And All right. I mean, if I could please ask that maybe you or a member of the tech team could possibly text Sam and ask if there's any assistance that we could provide to help with the connection. There may not be anything that we can do on our end. Yes, I'll contact them. Thank you so much. All right, um, Seidel. Yes. And Neville. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you so much. We'll follow with number five on the agenda, share the success and recognition. And I understand we have a back to school video. I think Sandy, there we go. Yeah. This is a very short back to school video um, that just is a few highlights from um, the event, which was virtual this year that many of you were there and present for. And I'm going to cue Jonas to take it away. Thank you, Rachel. Um, we are following that with our superintendent's report. So Superintendent Lewandowski, I would invite you to make any comments on the video that you'd like to share and then maybe just continue to move forward with the report this evening. Thank you, um, Madam Chair and board members. Good evening. Uh, yes, the back to school workshop was different in many ways, um, but I think very powerful in many ways uh, as well. And we were excited to not only do it virtually, but to uh, really send some messages about what priorities we are working on this year. Um, and RESMA really is the intersection of, of the two biggest priorities, which are around race equity and trauma. So we are really looking forward um, to working with him this coming year. And you're going to hear more about that a little later in the agenda, uh, but we, we um, managed to pull it off successfully. And we have already um, had staff back for um, a couple of weeks now. So it's it's uh, getting very real. Uh, and to that point, uh, we have some uh, um, reports tonight that to share with you that we think will uh, back up those themes. Um, the first one uh, is something we mentioned to you in the past and have been working on refining, and that's um, an anti-racist leadership uh, pilot. Uh, recognizing that there are just a lot of barriers to getting people of color in leadership roles. And also that we know that a lot of our staff uh, in District 287 uh, have a lot of talent and aspiration that we could support uh, in the goal of getting more leaders of color uh, in District 287. So Chad's been working on that and I'm going to invite him to present the proposal to the board. It is an action item. Um, and so we'll uh, take questions and then the board can make their vote. So Chad. 
Thanks, Sandy. Can you all hear me okay? Excellent. I'm uh, a little misplaced tonight and uh, in a little bit of a different environment than I'm used to, so I just wanted to make sure. Uh, thanks, Sandy, Madam Chair, and members of the board. Um, so in the past, um, well, the past three years, we've um, been you know, operationalizing the West Metro Partnership to help our staff obtain uh, licensure in the special education realm. And obviously our intent has been to increase the number of licensed staff of color. Um, while we were doing that, we also recognized that we had a, a significant void in, in our leadership in, in terms of uh, leaders of color. And um, while we were getting the West Metro um, up and running, we knew we were gonna have to do something about that as well. And so several months ago, as Sandy mentioned, you were apprised of um, our intention to develop a, a pilot program so that we could begin growing our own anti-racist leaders in 287, which is obviously a significant pillar in our strategic priorities. Um, when, we, uh, when we brought the draft proposal, um, pilot proposal to you, we hadn't at that point had enough conversation about it uh, with leaders and hadn't brought in enough diverse perspectives to really um, scrutinize what we had uh, proposed and to get some, you know, some feedback and challenge ourselves on, on what we were thinking about doing. Uh, since you last saw the draft proposal, we, we made just only a few minor changes. So what you saw um, a, a few months ago um, hasn't changed significantly. The the two um, major things that we we changed, and really I guess they weren't major, really was um, we increased the reimbursement amount slightly so that it would align with our West Metro Partnership reimbursement. And we also, um, through further conversation, we clarified who would be eligible to participate. We just didn't want to limit it to um, instructional um, license positions, if you will. And we really wanted to ensure that we could keep the language broad enough to include leaders um, um, that would be interested in an operational leadership position, like in uh, the, the service center, for example. And um, that was really um, the, the biggest changes. The rest were um, fairly trivial really just more clarification. And so um, we're ready to pilot and we know we're gonna learn and it's a pilot and we'll need to make improvements in the future. And one other important point that I made the last time, many of the tenets of this leadership um, pilot program, I believe, and I think others do too, that it will also inform the redesign of our West Metro partnership, which Tanya Allen is leading right now. Uh, we had our first advisory meeting today for the West Metro partnership. And so, uh, you know, we're really looking at focusing on expanding our, um, we're looking for people that are serious about expanding their racial consciousness and their culturally responsive instructional practices and leadership practices. And so um, I'm excited about Tanya Allen leading our West Metro partnership effort. And it really dovetails nicely with uh, the work that we've done in collaboration across the district with this leadership program. And uh, so I'll stop there. Um, and Madam Chair, I'll open it up for questions. Thank you, Chad. We appreciate the background. Uh, are there any questions or comments regarding this proposal and presentation? And I don't, I don't see any raised hands or waving hands. So at that this point, then I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the anti-racist leadership pilot as presented. Is there a motion? I so move. Okay. Casey. Casey. Is there a second? Seconded, Heidi Marty. Seconded by Heidi Marty. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? 
All right, Andrea, would you please call the roll? Adams. Aye. Bracky, absent. Casey. Aye. Keen, yes. Dallas. Absent. Douglas, absent. Koontz. Aye. Marty. Aye. Sant. Absent. Seidel. Aye. Neville. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, next up on our agenda is um, item 6.2, update on next steps for the District 287 learning plan. And Sandy, would you like to introduce this or we can begin with Ben. And Sandy, I think you might be muted. Thank you. Um, just like many of your districts, we continue to um, refine and move forward with our learning plan and we sent out additional information just within the, the last week or so, and also have uh, determined some other next steps forward. So we wanted to share those with you as information. Uh, we're pleased with where we are. It's a, it's a long road, obviously, to uh, get all these different programs and services back in uh, a, a, a live mode, if you would, or a hybrid mode. So we're excited to share that information with you, and Ben is going to do that. Thank you, Sandy, Board Chair Neville, members of the board. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and walk through a presentation. You are seeing my presentation okay, correctly? Yes. Thank you. So there's three things that we want to cover over the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, very briefly is an overview of the survey and data collection that we've been doing over the last couple of weeks. The bulk of the time is on our updates to our back to school plan that Sandy just mentioned, and then we'll save some time for questions and answers at the end. This promise is likely familiar to you from the past times that we've presented it. I wanna reiterate it here though, because it's important for our planning and decision-making around how we return to school. First, safety and well-being for our staff and students always comes first. And that we believe that for us to do our work well, it's important that we engage our staff, our stakeholders, our families, and our students to make sure that our planning and our decision-making is on point and connected to where our staff and families find themselves. A racial equity lens as part of all of our decisions and further part of all of our conversations. I'll give an example of how that's played a part in our decision making and process in just a second. And a focus on trauma sensitive and healing centered practices that we know in particular our black and brown students have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic and impacted by losing jobs and coming back to school and all that's gone with the side products of this pandemic. And we wanna make sure that for those students and for all of our students, that we continue to practice in a trauma sensitive and healing centered way. One of the ways that we've taken a racial equity lens in our work is how we've gone about collecting data this time around. Whereas in March and May, we sent out electronic surveys and, and, and definitely did follow up work to the best of our ability. This time around, we wanted to make sure that we were reaching our families in a different kind of way. So rather than yet another electronic survey, our assistant principals, some licensed support staff and others made personal phone calls to all of our families. And one of the things that we learned along the way is that approximately 20% of our families would keep their students home and connected learning, regardless of whether or not we were gonna offer a hybrid option or an, a full in-person option for schooling. And that about another 15% were still undecided about what their decision would be about a return to school or not if presented with that opportunity. 
similar to March and May, we collected the data that you can see here on the first several bullet points. Child care, the need for meals and technology, internet access, pathways on high tech and low tech, those one, two, three different types of pathways that we've talked about in the past. But we also asked other information about what preferred instructional times it would be and how many live check-ins per week would they like with their teacher. And we wanted to make sure they understood the process that we were engaging in with our IEP meetings early this school year. One note I wanna make here back on this slide is that because of the, this uh, revised approach that we've taken with phone calls, it's been led and coordinated at the site level. At this time, I don't have aggregated district-wide data to share with you of the results of, of all of the different aspects of that data. But that's something that we can collate and put together for a future presentation. All that data sits uh, in individual silos uh, because it's all collected at the site level. I'll switch over to the updates on our plan. And this graphic here, I'm sure is familiar to, to everybody at this point. And what you see in step zero on the left-hand side of the screen is really the same thing that you've seen in the past around how we've tried to improve our version of distance learning and into something that we've called connected learning, a new and improved version with in-person options of, connect, of, of distance learning. The real changes in our plan come in the bottom half or, the, or towards the middle of the screen here on who returns to school, and specifically in step one and step two. We've added additional students to return in step one. Those students coming back in step, now, step one now include students in grade kindergarten through fifth, students in 12th grade or within seven credits of graduation, and students in their final year of transition. And in step two, we'd be serving all of those students in step one. In addition, our middle school students, grades sixth, seventh, and eighth, our students in 11th grade or within 14 credits of graduation, and all of our other transition students. And in step three, it remains how it was before, which is all of our students will be served at that step. Recall that these are hybrid steps and that students returning will be returning for two days, either in a Monday, Tuesday cohort or a Wednesday, Thursday cohort. One of the things that we also want to make sure that we understood over the last couple of weeks is how many students would actually be on site on our campuses. And what you see here in this table are the estimated daily counts. And in the first line where you see the numbers, that's step one. So for Ann Bremer Education Center in the column, one over from the left, step one would be 20 to 30 students for North Education Center, 25 to 35 students. South Education Center, 20 to 30. West Education Center, 20 to 30. For a total of students on site in either cohort A on the Monday, Tuesday, or cohort B on the Wednesday, Thursday, for a total of approximately 100 students. Again, about 100 in cohort one and another 100 in cohort two. Following the similar pattern about the middle of your screen then is step two. And you can see there that we would arrive at a daily student count in total approximately at uh, 210 to 250 students. And in the bottom of your screen, you can see that when we are at step three, which is a hybrid model for all of our students, it would be approximately 300 students. Again, 300 in each of the cohorts. We made some assumptions to be able to pr uh, project the data that you just saw. One is back to that survey, indicating that approximately 20% of our students would not return to a hybrid model or to an in-person model. Of course, there's variations by programs and by sites, but 
we use 20% for our calculations. And to be able to understand how many students might be within seven credits of graduation at step one, we used 15% of projected ALC enrollment to get at that number. Similarly, in step two, to be able to project and predict uh, the number of students within 14 credits of graduation, we used an estimate of 30% of our ALC projected enrollment. The next couple slides are, are um, specific to programs. You can see here that at Hennepin Technical College, or our Hennepin Tech programs in Gateway and Career Tech, there's a limited number of students returning at each of those steps. Our rationale for making the adjustments that I just described is one, the relatively no, low numbers of students at each step. Two, that we have sufficient physical space at our sites to accommodate the students that we uh, shared in that table. And three, we want to ensure access to in-person learning at all of our sites. And this model allows some students to return at all of our across all of our sites. In regards to our care and treatment programs, they are a bit different. Some of our care and treatment programs will return to in-person learning on September 14th. Those are the five programs that you see in the bullets towards the top of your screen. Three other programs will return on September 28th. And three additional programs will remain in connected learning pending collaboration with our partners. As is the case with, with any uh, return to school, staff will have at least a two week notice of that in-person learning move. In regards to our itinerant programs, our staff will continue to follow the learning model in place in each of their member districts in which they serve. Our teams are working to support the development of, of the contingency learning plans for all students who receive special education. And lastly, our team members are becoming familiar with member district health and safety practices and are creating schedules that minimize travel between buildings. The last part that I wanna walk through before we open it up to any questions is our metric review process. And safely as possible, we've made a decision that we'll review our metrics each week. And we believe that although that's a short timeline for bringing students back, that we can successfully evaluate our metrics, including learning about what's been working in our districts, other districts across the metro, and our member districts, even during that short timeline of a, of a week by week review. Our rationale is that we believe that it's the right thing to do for students if we can do it safely. That if we can safely bring our students back to in-person learning, then we should do so, and we should do so as quickly as we can. The governor, through his executive orders, provided direction on returning vulnerable populations to school as soon as safely possible. We've had personal contact and described our unique district to officials from the Minnesota Department of Health and they support this process of a weekly review and potential increase each week. And lastly, our phased model brings students uh, back more slowly than most of our member districts. The slide that you see here is simply a table of when we will review those metrics. We'll draw your attention attention to the uh, upper left hand uh, part here where the first date that you see is September 10th that's that's today and so we met and reviewed our metrics today and there you see September 28th as the, the first potential step increase to step one that we've uh, been referring to over the last couple meetings those met, uh, those metrics are the four things that you see here COVID-19 case rate per 10,000 that we received from Hennepin County, 
broken down by city whenever we have access to that data. Input from our member districts, factors and lessons learned relating to how we can keep our students and staff safe, and any additional guidance that we receive from the governor, Department of Education, or the Department of Health. When we reviewed those metrics earlier today, we determined that uh, our incident command team determined that we will move to step one on September 28th and invite our students back to in-person learning for those student populations previously described. It also means that we'll review those metrics again in one week from today to make a decision about whether or not we would move to step two. I will leave it there and open it up for questions. Thank you, Ben. And thank you to your team who has been working with you to put this together and continue to make revisions. We recognize the large volume of work that this represents. Are there any questions or comments? I don't see any raised hands. Andrea? Andrea? Sorry, Regina. It's Andrea Keene. Go ahead. Um, Oh, no, I forgot my question. I was waving my hand so wildly. Oh, you, I can't see your video. What we see is your pic, or what I see on my computer screen is your picture. Oh. My, the no. video appears to be turned, but can other people see her video? Yes. So this is just a quirk on my end. I apologize. I don't know why I can't see you. So thank you, Sandy, for letting me know that Andrea was waving her hand. My question has. Do you remember your, yes, do you remember your question? <laughs> Could you please remind me um, who are some of the members of the incident command team for the school district? Chad, I might have uh, you help me out here, uh, but um, uh, Chad is our incident commander. Chad Maxa, uh, Sandy, uh, myself, May Hawkins, Ann Becker, Elizabeth Lodge Rogers. Tanya Allen, Melissa Broding, and John Voss. Who am I missing? Jake. Jake. Jake Horish, our safety manager. <laughs> and I would just add, um, Andrea, that um, we also, that's the core incident command uh, team, but we also have a once in a week meeting at least um, with that group and uh, all the principals and now we're joining assistant principals in that as well. So uh, we are able to have that back and forth kind of planning conversation. Great. Thank you for that list. And I, I just wanted to thank you as well for um, doing the hard work to get the survey information from our families. Uh, I just think it's so impressive that everyone was called personally um, on the telephone. And it's just a great way to make sure that our, our families feel like they're getting that personalized attention and their needs are being met. That's just so impressive. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, additional questions or comments? I can see most of you on video, which is nice, but there are a few <laughs> photographs. So um, don't hesitate to speak up if I'm not able to recognize you. Okay, we will continue to move forward with the agenda. But Ben, thank you. That, that is impressive work. And it's exciting that we are taking that next step beginning September 28th. And um, I know that you'll can, this is in good hands. It just feels like we have the right metrics in place to continue to review this and we will be as safe as possible and we will continue to move forward. So thank you so much. Our next item on the agenda is racial equity themes for 2021. And I'm excited to welcome Director of Equity and Inclusion, Radius Guess. And uh, Superintendent Lewandowski, would you like to begin with any comments? Um, I just, uh, again, uh, like to emphasize this priority um, area for the district, not just this school year, but always, but also to um, uh, welcome Radius to the district. And now that she's had uh, several weeks under her belt, uh, we just feel like she is going to 
assist us in in moving forward our the outcomes that we're looking for and uh, part of that um, um, theme was described to you i think in that short video uh, but we really have i think already increased um, the the consciousness about just talking about racial equity no matter what discussion we're in uh, and i think that already has proved to be not only useful, but um, what much more equitable in, in terms of the decisions we made. So I, I think uh, we, we look forward to more of that. For tonight, um, I asked Radius just to summarize some of the themes that we sent during the back to school workshop, if you weren't able to attend or watch that, uh, but also to suggest some, some topic areas for the board's work as we go forward. So Radius, thank you. Thank you. Am I on mute? No, you're good. No, you're, you're okay. okay. Thank you. So I have a couple of presentations on tonight. And so this first one is just basically to share with you some of the themes that we heard. But later on, I want to get into, you know, uh, an interactive conversation with you around uh, race equity. So when it comes to the themes, uh, there were many. And we talked, I think, um, Madam Chair Neville started out by sharing a welcome, uh, starting the school year off right, requiring uh, motivating teachers and getting them excited about the year ahead, as well as letting them know just how important they are to the success of students and the school. Um, we had a very powerful and moving uh, speech. We talked a lot about um, silence is really not an acceptable option. Uh, Madam Chair Neville addressed uh, the role of white privilege and she shared the uh, work that she herself is doing in the year-long equity cohort uh, to deepen her understanding. Uh, Superintendent uh, Lewandowski really had a very powerful message. Uh, she started out by worrying is taking center stage, you know, and taking a knee to symbol for those who are fighting for racial justice. Um, if staff are healthy and cared for and support the and receiving the support uh, the best way possible to do their jobs, uh, students will be cared for as well. And that was a very strong message and thing that was uh, presented throughout the presentation by both uh, Superintendent Sandy as well as our keynote speaker, uh, Resma Minikim. Um, it was really strong uh, 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 message around uh, a theme for imagining the year of 2030, you know, and it was really cool to hear uh, Superintendent Sandy talk about teachers making six figures and renaming a lot of our schools, uh, Philando Castile High School and Jamar Clark Middle School and George Floyd Elementary, you know, and our, the year 2030 disrupting racist policies and, and procedures and a lot of action civics and family and community engagement. Am I still on? Okay, thank you. Internet is act kind of funky, so I wasn't really sure. Um, another theme was uh, giving everyone permission to cry. You know, um, we have taught for so many years that our men should not cry, our black boys should not cry, but the intersection of race and the pandemic that we're all experiencing, you know, the system isn't broken. It's really doing exactly what it was designed to do. And uh, that was a part of uh, Superintendent Sandy's message as well. When Resma came on board to talk about um, we're all in this together in the keynote that he addressed, he really contextualized race and racism for all of us. And he talked about uh, the importance of building a capacity, building a, a container to support the work and uh, our role in our, our, our part in uh, facilitating uh, the building of capacity. Um, he talked a little bit about uh, dealing with the vibes and understanding our bodies as uh, barometers. And that was a thing, kind of getting in touch with understanding the trauma of race and the impact that it has on your body. You know, that was something that um, he talked about and that was a really sharp theme that he addressed. Um, 
Black Lives Matter was a theme that was uh, discussed throughout the uh, kickoff from both uh, Superintendent Sandy as well as our keynote speaker, uh, because we need our Black students to know Black Lives Matter, their lives matter, their dreams matter, their experience in 287 matters. All lives can't matter until Black Lives Matter. Again, that was a theme that was uh, present throughout. One of the things I also thought was really important to share with you is that our workshop week for our teachers had some amazing uh, race equity presentations. Uh, Dr. Voss and uh, professional learning manager uh, Marissa Nathan did an outstanding job pulling in racial equity just to kind of highlight some of the workshops that were offered for staff. I think there was maybe 14 plus workshops. I know that I presented uh, six sessions on uh, last week to staff around uh, race equity just to support them so that when they came um, in contact with their students and the students might want to to host or have a conversation around race what that could look like and what that might mean for the students and for the staff as well so that was a session that was very popular amongst staff but race equity was a common thing that occurred throughout the last couple of weeks for staff And that's my message. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, just a little wayfinding for me. At this point, um, do you have a second part that you want to roll into, or is this a good opportunity to pause for some questions and comments? Well, I uh, radio say no. I think she's referencing the board themes. Okay. I'm gonna suggest. So maybe pausing right here, see if there's any questions about the workshop themes. Okay. Great. And it was, I do wanna thank you and um, Superintendent Lewandowski and everyone who put together that back to school workshop. And for those board members who were able to attend, I think it was really powerful just to be present all together, to hear the messages. Um, to listen to Resma speak, I uh, really appreciated all of that. It was a it was a great way to begin the school year, and certainly resonated with where we are. You know, this is acknowledging. It makes so much sense to just acknowledge this is the the world that we are in right now in the fall of 2020. For board members, I would invite any questions or comments. Ruthie, welcome. Uh, well, thank you. I'm sorry I was running late. I missed Sandy's report, I know, and uh, proud of the bake, the school video, too. I did get a chance to see some of the video, and it was powerful. It was really, I mean, good. I didn't get the initial part at the beginning, but you le I left excited and wanted to share it with others, but I guess I didn't have permission, right? <laughs> So thank you for all of your work. It was really good, very good. Thank you, Ruthie. I appreciate your, your comments and uh, you can sure share it anywhere you'd like. We'll make sure you're able to do that. Oh, really? Yeah, um, we can, uh, maybe maybe Rachel can shoot you an email and just explain how to do that. Okay, thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? Okay, I'm not seeing any. I, I, Regina, I just have one quick thing, Suzanne. Yeah. Um, I just want to echo how powerful it was that what you the way you shared. And I, one of my favorite things was watching the live conversation that was happening um, in the comments on YouTube among the staff and just how robust and courageous um, that conversation was that was happening live as as the event was going on. So I just wanted to um, to share that that was certainly a highlight and um, just really reflected so well of our staff. Uh, thank you. And, and maybe uh, Rachel or Radius, if you could just speak to the number of Flipgrid um, videos that staff created and published, um, and maybe tell board members where they might find those. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think we were all a little bit surprised of, of how much engagement there actually was around this single event. There were thousands of comments, as, as you pointed out already, happening during the event among staff. 
um, you know, Sandy had also prompted staff to participate in this flip grid where staff could share their promises and their beliefs around race and race equity work. We had had over a hundred staff members submit videos that are a minute and a half just sharing their own promises and beliefs, um, which was pretty significant. And then we also had all staff um, submit an exit ticket. Uh, so we have reflections from, from over 850 staff members sharing their own reflections. So even from this event, um, we've just had an opportunity to, to observe our staff engage and get them engaged in this work. So it was um, pretty exciting to see that level of engagement. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Regina, I have a quick comment. It's Andrea. Yes, Andrea, go ahead. I just wanted to build on what Ann Casey said. Um, and I just think um, 287, Sandy, your leadership team, you're so courageous. And um, I think there are a lot of meetings where the chat box next to the presentation is not left on for people to say whatever they want, because sometimes the things that people say might be more uncomfortable. And um, the comments were honest, and some of them were challenging what was said, and then other people would speak up and give a different perspective. And if anyone started to even edge on being disrespectful, someone else called them out. And I just, mm -hmm. I found the comments to be really powerful. Um, and not all positive, but that that's why they were good. So thank you for having the courage to leave on the comments. Mm. Thank you, Andrea. I agree that it was courageous. Michelle. Yeah, I, um, I love these back to school events. We've, we've done the gamut from everyone being in one, in one place and now to what we did this week. Um, concerning the, the comments, um, it, I guess it's maybe my age, I don't know, I'm not fast enough. So I start to write something and then it disappears. And I'm wondering, <laughs> but I did catch some of the, the comments, they were truly powerful. I think people need to feel empowered and this is a great way to do it. I'm just wondering what happens with all these comments and is there any way for us to look back at some of them or I'm not sure how that would work. Yes. Uh, we want to try that first. Yes. So if you visit our YouTube channel now um, and you click on that video um, of the back to school event that there's um, YouTube has an option so you can view it in the live replay and watch the scroll of the comments. Oh, they're still going to move pretty fast, though. Right. Uh, so you might want to, you know, have your pause button ready to, yeah, to you want to thoroughly read through them. Yep, Speedy Gonzalez shirt. So <laughs> thank you so much. And again, it was it was very powerful. Um, the keynote speaker, Resma. Mm -hmm. What a joy, and I'm really looking forward to learning from him and from you, Radius, and welcome again. I, I'm i just so thrilled with the, with where we're going, and I'm excited. I want to go along, mm -hmm. too, so I have far to go, <laughs> but thank you. Well, that's really a very good segue to some just some suggestions that uh, we wanted to put in front of you because this is um uh also the board's work um as part of our strategic plan and so that might be a perfect um segue for for radius just to mention a few things that that we've contemplated uh, for the year ahead uh, as board members thank you i've asked um Juanine if she will um run some slides for me as i uh present to you so one of the things that I thought would be really important is if we could really give some thought to what courageous leadership looks like and what courageous leadership means for us. Next slide, please. So um, this is a question for anyone to answer in that I did say that I would like for this time for us to be uh, interactive. It is not, uh, my, my talk with you now is not uh, designed for it to be didactic. I really wanted uh, to hear from you. So when you think about courageous leadership, what does it look like? And what do you, do you know it when you see it? 
That's a question I'd like to ask you to respond to right now. Courageous leadership. What does it look like and do you know it when you see it? I'm probably not getting just a little protocol um, with the video. I can't see everyone's faces. So I would invite you if it's all right, Radius, for people to just call out their answers. They don't need to wait to be called on. But I will just start out with it. Sandy Lewandowski's presentation at that back to school event looked like courageous leadership to me. She was yeah. and had, Sandy, you have not been afraid to say what is important to be said and in a thoughtful and reflective way. So thank you. Anyone else like to share? What does it look like and do you know it when you see it? Courageous leadership. I would um, say, so this is Heidi Marty. Um, I just, I, I'm seeing examples of courageous leadership in, in my own district and 287 in just all of the preparations for this school year. The challenges are in, have been enormous. And just the fact that, you know, people keep moving forward and looking in how to improve in, in the midst of, of all of these changes, uh, still looking to improve like 287 is just is just looking to improve on what we did in the spring. How can we make our our, our distance learning uh, even better? And I just the the press for to improve upon what we've done in the past um, and and continuing our progress is is very impressive. And, and that's what I would call courageous leadership. Mm. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. So this slide just kind of represents some things that resonated with me as I was giving some thought to uh, characteristics of a courageous leader. You know, the courage to step out of unhelpful or unproductive situations, courage to have difficult conversations, Courage to challenge yourself to be and to think differently. Courage to admit mistakes. Courage to innovate. Be prepared to let go of precious practices. And the courage of convictions. Is there one or maybe two of those characteristics that speaks to you? This is what it looked like for me. And these were some of the themes that, you know, I heard on the on the, the chat that was streaming during our um, kickoff event on Tuesday. Next slide, please. So the time that I have with you, I, I thought I better just kind of narrow it down and identify a couple of objectives. And so for me, the first one was basically just to understand our commitment to advance race equity. So it's my hope that that's a takeaway from you for you and that when you leave tonight, you'll have a better feel for the commitment that we all have, not just as board members, but, you know, staff and students as well, you know, and to make intentional, deliberative, uh, deliberate choices about the role of whiteness in 287's racial equity journey of will and skill. Okay, next slide, please. So an overview and assumptions of some of the things that we have been seeing in the media or reading about social media, uh, conversations that we're having with our family and friends, um, race matters. And we aren't just talking about individual acts of bigotry, but institutions rely on processes and procedures that can perpetuate inequity. We are all part of institutions and systems, and we have a responsibility to advance racial equity. Next slide, please. So the question that you're probably asking, because I ask myself this question all the time, um, why we focus on equity? And so the letters DEI comes up a lot, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I wanted to break that down for you. For me, diversity is just about representation, seeing myself in the room, right? Inclusion is access to decision-making 
information and opportunities, but equity is about outcomes. We ask a different set of questions for equity. We take a holistic approach to strategy and we look at root causes. That's what equity is about. And that's where we're headed. That's the work that we are doing, equity. Next slide, please. So where are we? District 287 has spent the last couple of years preparing staff how to talk about race, recognizing where people are on the compass and understanding the role of whiteness in our consciousness. That's what we have been doing for the last couple of years. So that's why when I heard um, Chair Neville say and Superintendent Lewandowski say that the next two years will be like no other because our lives as educators is changing, right? Next slide, please. So I thought about uh, John Lewis and then I remembered that uh, Resma referred to him as the ancestor and listening to and hearing the ancestor. And he talked about describing good trouble, necessary trouble. So the question that I have for you is, what does that mean to you? What is good trouble? What is necessary trouble? I mean, I have some ideas of what I think that that means for me, but what does that mean for you as board leaders? What does race equity good trouble look like? What does race equity necessary trouble look like? And not just race equity, but equity in general. What does that mean for you? Radius, could I ask you a question? This is Andrea. Yes. Um, I, I saw um, on social media yesterday um, that Channel 11 was covering a story that there is a good trouble coalition of principles in the metro. Um, and then I couldn't find any other information about it, even though it said there was some kind of a press release. Do you have any information about that coalition or where I could? No, but I saw Sandy's head nodding, so she okay. must have some information. <laughs> um, just a little information because I saw the same social media reference to it, and I think it was uh, initiated by Mari, the superintendent or the principal at. Um, oh, love them. The the movie they just produced about a school in Minneapolis. I'm just blocking on the school's name. She was the principal of that school, um, and uh, she was the one initiating the social media uh, comment. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't know any more information about it. I will say that uh, I uh, Lucy Laney. Thank you, um, Lucy Laney. Oh, okay. Um, I, uh, I I do recognize uh, the needed intent behind that uh, formation of a group. Uh, this is hard work, and uh, it it uh, takes it does take courage to step out there. And when you step out there, you also take risks. And so, having a group to both fall back on, get ideas from, get support from. I think will become really important. Um, and I'd certainly be interested in any group like that for superintendents. So I'm making a couple calls about that very thing myself because I, I do recognize the benefit of, of having that kind of group. Thanks, Sandy. And I wonder if you're if you're thinking of superintendents, I wonder if that work might align somehow with Reimagine Minnesota, because I think a lot of that is true when when you have a lot of those metro districts all um, believing in the pillars of Reimagine Minnesota, um, it just kind of props everyone up and gives everyone cover and provides consistency and all those good things. So, yeah, thank you. It certainly could be Andrea. Thanks. I think part of the reason that uh, we're asking this question is because uh, of, of what we've shared with you um, tonight is that we're stepping off into, a, we're making a bigger step, if you will. Um, I've made this comment several times uh, that Radius 
said that was the rubber that meets when the rubber meets the road kind of speed mm -hmm. and we're, we're hitting the road now um, and uh, we're going to be doing some more um, I think uh, significant work um, action oriented work and and uh, that that involves the board too and so we want to stay together uh, in that work I think also uh, one thing that's important uh, to note is that uh, I think at the last board meeting crystal mentioned in a in a comment about uh, the need to hold me as superintendent um, um, uh, that that accountable in this work and I welcome that and I can tell you that um, more than one staff reached out to me in the past week and said I'm gonna hold you to what you said and I take that very seriously but I also work with the board and so I'm encouraging you to to be thinking about uh, this work and the implications of this work um, because we are in it together and so hence the question um, what looks like good trouble to you is is it is a question we are interested in ruthie i saw that you were um waving your hand right Did you have uh, a i was uh just going to say and and i think you've already said it sandy and andrea um good trouble necessary trouble takes me back to what is a courageous leader and courageous leaders take those steps, the bold steps that typically someone might not in a lot of these systems that keep them confined in speaking out and taking action against certain things might be policies, procedures, or creating uh, certain uh, activities that uh, it increase uh, different ones awareness of situations but being bold enough to step out and say something and do something about what you are passionate about and feel should happen within those systems to make changes for the better of the all but uh, for a lot of people it's looked at as trouble but it's good for the good uh, the well-being of everyone in the end well said, Ruthie, well said. I like the direction the school is going. And I was going to ask Sandy, and I'll do all of you, the superintendents, come together periodically and talk about the directions you're going, taking, and um, how do you share what each one are doing? Mm -hmm. I think it is a superintendent's group meeting periodically. Yeah, there's a, a couple things that come to mind right away, and one is the one Andrea mentioned, um, the Reimagine Minnesota is probably the biggest oh, yeah. organized group um, of superintendents, particularly that over the last few years have organized themselves to uh, come up with um, a, a several part um, plan of how Minnesota could look different if we reimagine it, particularly in the area of race equity. So there's a large group um, that meets around that. Um, but there's also small groups. Uh, for example, I, I met with a small group to uh, the Mankato Courageous Conversations group last year with a small group of superintendents, and we did a book study on how to be an anti-racist. So um, mm -hmm. both have value in, in uh, different ways. And so there's, there's really a, a couple of things that I've participated in, and I'm sure there's other ones out there as well. Wow. And I, I would think your plan might be shocking to a lot of the other districts at certain times, some of the steps you're taking. <laughs> well, there were a few people shocked, I think, because uh, I heard from them. Uh, but uh, I think um, it's, it's a good shock from my definition. <laughs> Thank you. And I, um, Sandy, I think that Radius has had some internet trouble because it doesn't oh. look like she is still a part of the meeting. Oh, well, thank you for knowing that. And she that. had mentioned that at the beginning of the meeting yeah. that she was having some intermittent issues with internet. And it looks like this is one of those times. I don't know mm -hmm. if you're able to continue through the slide deck yeah. or what would you recommend? 
I think uh, we probably can uh, just uh, hold right here. Um, I do know that uh, she was going to, and I, I um, am with her on that, encourage you to begin reading the book, My Grandmother's Hands. Uh, we mm -hmm. still haven't formulated a board um, uh, plan, if you will, for a book study or exactly how we would do that. But I would say start reading is one thing. Um, the other thing is that uh, we we uh, did put out an invitation. Uh, she put out an invitation for a year of learning with Resma. Uh, mm -hmm. We're looking forward to uh, around 100, maybe a little over 100 even, uh, being in that group. Uh, she had 85 um, applications, I believe, in less than 24 hours to be on it from staff. Um, all of our leadership team will be doing it. And the goal of that is that that group that he trains will be in internal influencers of uh, the work around uh, race equity. And so we'd really encourage board members, if, if you'd like to be a part of that, it will involve uh, a couple of four hour trainings. And is, he, he's an excellent, uh, excellent in many, many ways, but really looking forward uh, to him sharing uh, his work and, and how we might um, adopt that in moving forward. So that was the, another key thing I wanted to mention and she wanted to mention, yes. Yeah, um, Michelle. Thank you, Sandy and uh, Regina. Um, so what what are the, um, the criteria to join that group and uh, we'll we'll send you. We'll ask Juanine to send you the specific application. So and it has it listed in there. It's okay. it's um, it's it's not a lot what you need to bring to the table, but it's learning at the table and then taking that learning forward. Um, right, forward. right. Well, and I think something like that. I you know even if I'm not uh, on the board anymore in in a couple of years or maybe sooner, who knows? Um, this is something that will enrich my my world because there's so much to learn about what it means to be anti-racist or um, um yeah just basically that and i i feel this um need to understand more i always thought oh yeah no that's not a problem i know all about that well i don't so that's why I'm really, really pleased that we're doing this kind of work. And thank you. Yeah, of course. Radius, I see that you're you're back. Think I know that you've had a couple of internet issues and it happens. And I'd say that any of us are going through internet things if we're doing any kind of uh, pandemic Zoom and Google Meet meetings. It's just, mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. Um, I think we could finish through that slide deck if it's possible to requeue it, Juanine. Thank you. I definitely apologize for that. Um, no, not a problem. Great. I appreciate yeah, it. No, I took them through a couple of the things <laughs> that I remembered. Thank you. Next slide, please, Juanine. So again, and next slide. Thank you. Just keep clicking because this is what good trouble looks like for us at uh, 287. We will be participating in a year of learning uh, with Resma. We launched the applica application to staff to submit if they were interested in joining us for this work. And right now I have about 70 staff that have officially submitted an application. We are really excited about that. Uh, we have 10 staff that are participating in an AASA equity cohort. Uh, we have lots of staff that have been involved in uh, book studies and some of the books that we have been reading are Blind Spot, Coherence, The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog, uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist, and we will be reading uh, when uh, with Resma for our year of learning, My Grandmother's Hands. Uh, Good Trouble is also mentoring and coaching uh, and knowing the difference between the two. Uh, family and community engagement, that's Good Trouble. Student Voice Matters, that's Good Trouble. 
Necessary trouble is different from good trouble. <laughs> so necessary trouble is really trying to design um, a two year, two to five year racial equity plan that aligns with our strategic priorities. Uh, necessary trouble is responding to the uh, concerns that Sandy addressed uh, from our EAs in her presentation, our educational assistance and a being heard instrument for them. That's necessary trouble. Dismantling structural racism, family and community engagement, again, uh, using our racial equity tools. And again, student voices matter. That's necessary trouble. I know that you could add to this list. But the question oftentimes that I find myself wanting to respond to is, why are we leading with race, right? Why lead with race? Racial inequities across all indicators for success are deep and pervasive, right? Racial anxiety is on the rise in our community, nation, and world. And race is oftentimes the elephant in the room. We really do have a very difficult time having a race-based conversation. Learning an institutional and structural approach can be used with other areas of marginalization. So that if we get this one right, that will transfer over to other areas of marginalization. Specificity matters. Race explicit, but not exclusive, always brings an intersectional analysis. That's why we are leading with race. So the back to school 2020 year is all about putting theory into action. So the question that I have for you is, what is one action that you can take to advance race equity? I really want you to give that some thought. And maybe that's not a question that you can answer right now, but because of the work that we are all committing ourselves to do, we're putting the muscle behind this movement, right? So what's the one action? It can be a personal action, a professional action that you are willing to take to help advance race equity. And then when you take a look at a systems approach, what are the opportunities for institutional actions that we can take together collectively to advance race equity through our policy, through our procedures, through our programs. What might that look like? What's that one thing that you feel that we should really galvanize, we should really mobilize, put some muscle behind moving that forward? So that's my presentation. I would love to invite um, the rest of the staff that are here tonight to join me in responding to any questions that you might have. And, and Radio, I would just add that um, if, if board members are interested in doing um, a, that really short minute and a half um, Flipgrid video, um, just contact uh, Rachel for uh, ease of connection right now, and uh, we'll we'll show you how to do it. I think it'd be great if you uh, be interested in putting your thoughts into video um, along with our staff. We do have one uh, board member that has joined staff in participating in the national equity cohort but we also were interested in hoping that there might be a couple of board members that might like to join us for the year of learning with resma so give that some thought please let superintendent sandy know if you are interested we'd love to have you join us in that journey so i saw ruthie waving her hand and i know ann casey has selected the raise hand and I'm going to start with you because I think you were you may have had your hand raised a little while ago, and then we're going to follow with Ruthie if that's all right. So Anne, thank you. I, my question is, I think fairly uh, simple. So um, I noticed the um, in one of the slides a reference to using the compass and the language of courageous conversations, and I is that something the board has. Of this board has ever been trained in. I'm just thinking about like putting the theory into action. Are we are we even on this in the same language um, when we're talking about the theory before we put it into action? It sounds like that's the language that the staff is using or our board members. It's it's something that we have done in St. Louis Park and board members have taken courageous conversations. But I'm curious to know if others are on that same language. 
Yeah, thank you, Anne, and I can take a try at that. Uh, we have uh, done some training on it, but I think we've had some turnover of board members that warrants us uh, doing a refresher on that. So that's a, a great thing to bring up, and we'll do that. Thank you, and Ruthie, you had a um, question. I didn't have a question. I was just saying, yes, I'm interested in the year long oh, training. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We'll watch for that information. Are there any other questions or comments? Well, Radius, thank you so much for sharing, for leading this discussion. We really appreciate it and look forward to more of this because this is something that's ongoing. And so we look forward to the continued opportunities for us to engage as individual board members and for the updates. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up, item 6.4 on the agenda is a presentation information about guaranteed energy savings program for North Education Center. May Hawkins, welcome. Good evening, chair and board members. So the purpose of this report is really to provide some background information on an item that will be brought to the board at the next board meeting for a vote. Um, so the NEC lighting system is at end of life and is no longer supported according to the vendor. Um, the district's been having difficulty for over a year in getting replacement components um, when items fail or are damaged. And we do have some classrooms where they don't have local control anymore because we, the controller is basically permanently set to on because we can't get a replacement part. Um, so as the district looked at options, to, um, to deal with this situation, we discovered that converting the building to a new LED lighting system um, could also lead to energy savings, which could potentially offset the cost of the system upgrade. So, and that program is um, called the Guaranteed Energy Savings Program, and it's under Minnesota Statute 123B65. So in essence, what that guaranteed energy savings program is an agreement between the district and a provider where the provider is guaranteeing that the yearly payments associated with the project will at a minimum cover the save the cost of the project. So, um, so there's several steps involved. The first step is a study and that's what we're currently in the process of having completed. And then after the study is completed, there's basically three options. So either A, the study shows that there isn't sufficient savings, at which point everybody just walks away. There's no cost to the district. There's nothing if there isn't the, the sufficient savings there to proceed. Um, the second option is that the there it's determined that there are sufficient savings, energy savings there to cover the cost of the project. Um, and in that scenario, there is no cost for the study. The study's cost is rolled into the overall project. So, and then the third scenario is that we determine that there's significant savings and that the district just decides not to go ahead with the project, in which case that's the only scenario that we would have to pay for this study. Uh, the project involves uh, publications, right? So a publication that has already gone out seeking contractors. Um, it's on the district newspapers and on the website. Um, and then the board's being given background information tonight. And then next week, depending on the outcome of the directed engineering study, the district would publish the intent, intent to award in the newspapers and on the website. And then on the 24th, the board would actually take action. So that's just to give you some background on a guaranteed energy savings program that we're looking at for North as um, the system at North continues to fail. Um, and then really the changes in the lighting uh, industry and the, and the advances in lighting are why there would possibly be enough energy savings to address this. Are there any questions? Thank you, May. We appreciate the background. Any questions or comments? Sam, go ahead, please. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I'm, I'm excited to hear the this program and that District 287 is, uh, is participating in it, and I'm, I'm sure it will be a cost savings uh, kind of a side question, you know, leading into the this type of of, in, of industry with green energy, has the administration looked into anything as far as 
converting our buildings uh, into um, energy efficient, you know, something like with solar panels on top of roofs? So I'll answer the question. We did yeah. look at solar probably two or three years ago, and I brought it to the member district business managers, and they we discussed different options, and some of them had already done it, and they basically said not yet, that the solar industry isn't there yet, that the districts that had done it had wished they had waited, that they have broken components, and it's not it's not providing them what they thought it would. So. Um, We'll continue to look at that and see when the materials and things are at a point at a certain point, we will certainly look at converting to solar. I will also address the fact that um, our buildings have got, um, when we built NEC and when we built other buildings, we got really high energy ratings on those buildings and green awards for those buildings. And does that answer your question, Sam? Yes. Thank you. Adam, go ahead, please. Sorry, can you just uh, can you repeat uh, what the what the other district said? And I, I think I heard you correctly. But can you repeat what the pro the investigation process on that was? On the solar. Yes. Um, basically, this was like I think this was two years ago, um, and I I brought forward to the member district business managers, asking them, I. Before I invest in anything, I talk to the member district business managers to, and to ask about what their experiences had been with solar and things like that. And based on the feedback I got from member district business managers and one member district had already done a solar project, um, they said, not yet, wait. The, the, the materials and the, the reliability of the solar system were not there yet. Okay, uh, any additional questions or comments? Well, May, thank you for the background and we'll look forward to more on September 24th, correct? Okay. Correct, thank you. All right, thank you. So this concludes the superintendent's report this evening. Um, Sandy, are there any closing comments mm -hmm. that you'd like to make for this section before we move on? No, thank you. I, I believe we've covered it. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, there is no instructional report this evening and no business services and labor relations report. Uh, next up is board business. And for a chair report, we do have a resolution to consider this evening, and this will be an action item. This is regarding a hybrid opportunity for um, our board meetings in terms of our format, just making a shift. And in the board packet, there's a presentation regarding this shift, and I'll just talk through the, the general nature of it, is if the board agrees this evening, beginning at our September 24th meeting, we would have a couple of people present at the District 287 Service Center in the boardroom, and um, we would the, any board members who'd like to continue to participate virtually, that is still an option. So we will have some presence on site, and our understanding is that the boardroom can accommodate up to 12 people with safe social distancing practice. Um, so I'd like to just bring this resolution to the table first with a motion. Is there a motion to bring this resolution to the table? I so move. This is Andrea Keen. Moved by Andrea. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Sam Sant. And um, at this point, now that we have this at the table, I would like to propose a friendly amendment. And uh, let's see if I can, I think, can all of you see the resolution? If you have a copy of it, I'm gonna bring it up on the screen for board book premiere. And I'm gonna scroll down to the second page of the resolution item number three. And item number three addresses the audience opportunity for participation. And, and the way that this paragraph is written is we would have two different formats for audience participation. This would be the case if we pass the amendment regardless. We would be able to have members of the community come to the boardroom if they would like to, or they may continue the practice that we've had during our virtual board meeting format, such as tonight, 
they can submit a request by 4.30 p.m. the day of the board meeting that would be read at the board meeting. The language of the resolution suggests that members of the community may submit a form prior to the start of the board meeting and come to present the friendly amendment. I'm just going to explain and then give the language. Um, in conversation with Superintendent Lewandowski and some email exchange with Ann Becker, uh, I'd like to propose that we keep a consistent schedule because I think it's just complicated. We would have a 430 deadline for both 430 to submit a request to speak. Uh, one that keeps it consistent Two, in the case of community members who would like to do to come in present to be present in the boardroom it gives us that opportunity for a heads up to make sure we don't exceed our capacity of 12 people so we can make some plans or adjustments if needed to make sure that we can ensure safety so in terms of um, the friendly amendment the language of paragraph three would read as follows the public may provide written testimony at board meetings by filling out the request form for audience participation time. Here's the change, submitting it by 4.30 p.m. on the day of the board meeting. And the rest of the paragraph would continue as written in attending the meeting in person. So is there a motion to bring this friendly amendment to the table? I so move, this is Andrea Keene. Moved by Second. Andrea. Is there Michelle? Seconded by Michelle Coons. And at this time, I'd like to invite any discussion or comments about the friendly amendment. Is it a good idea or should we just keep the language as originally proposed? Chair ne Neville, I yes, think it's Steve. a good idea. I, I think it's a good idea uh, for the same the reason that you mentioned to keep the uh, room at the reasonable uh, required. Uh, level of participation. Thank you, Steve. Any additional questions or comments about the friendly amendment? And then we'll go, if if this is approved, we'll go back to discussion for the rest of the resolution. But any additional comments or questions regarding the proposed amendment? Okay, so at this point then, Andrea, I would ask that we call the roll and um, regarding just acceptance of the friendly amendment language. We will go back for full discussion regarding the full resolution. Would anyone like that language repeated? And we're good to go. So we have a motion and a second. Andrea, would you please call the roll to accept the friendly amendment as presented? Yes, uh, Adams. Aye. Blackie is absent. Casey. Aye. Keen, yes. Dallas. Yes. Douglas is absent. Kuhn. Aye. Marty. Aye. Sam. Oh, sorry. Aye. Seidel. Yes. Neville. Yes. All right, the amendment carries. Thank you very much. And at this time, I would like to offer that anyone who has questions or comments regarding the full resolution present them at this time. Any discussion? Okay, so we'll go ahead with this resolution. Um, with this resolution, Ann Becker, if I could just ask for point of order, I believe, do we need to do separately waive the reading of the resolution? Oh, do you need to have a separate vote on that? I mean, I, that's my question. Yes, thank you. Yes, you do. You we need do. to have a separate vote. Yes. Okay, so I am going to request a motion to waive the reading of the resolution. So move. I shall move. So I uh, second. Didn't catch that. <laughs> Was that I you, Steve? Moved Anna. by Ann, seconded by Adams. Okay, thank you. Um, mo uh, moved by Ann, seconded by Steve. Thank you, Andrea. Would you please call the roll to waive the reading of the resolution? Adams. Aye. Racky is absent. Thank you. Aye. 
Keen, yes. Dallas. Yes. Douglas is absent. Coons. Aye. Marty. Aye. Sant. Yes. Seidel. Yes. Neville. Yes. All right. The motion carries to waive the reading. Thank you. And now we still have the resolution on the floor and we are ready for a roll call vote to approve the resolution. Andrea, oh. would you please call the Oh, sorry. <laughs> Adam. We're ready. Aye. Brecky is absent. Casey. Aye. Keen is yes. Dallas. Yes. Douglas is absent. Coons. Aye. Marty. Aye. Neville. Aye. Stant. Yes. Seidel. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you all. So at our next meeting on September 24th, Superintendent Lewandowski and I will be present at the District 287 Service Center. And um, I know that we'll probably need one or two people to assist with the technical aspects of maintaining our continued live stream on YouTube. Sam, you have a question? Yes. So point of information re regarding this whole setup now. Yes. Um, being that we only allow 12, uh, 12 uh, people into the room during a meeting. Is it going to be first come first served? Or do we have to reserve it? Or is it definitely for board members and then any other administrative uh, personnel would be uh, remote? How would, how would all that work for the next meeting and there, thereafter? Right. And that's, a, that's an excellent question. So my my recommendation for right now uh, is that for sure, Superintendent Lewandowski and I will be there and we'll, I imagine that similar to when we started our virtual meetings, we kind of needed a practice session just to work things out and make sure that we have it flowing smoothly. Um, if it, Sandy and Juanine, if this sounds all right, what I would like to do is invite any board members and staff, you know, our lead team who's present this evening, if you would like to be present at that meeting, Juanine, is it all right if people contact you between now and September 24th to express that interest? Yes. Thank you. So if you have an interest in joining, we can accommodate up to 12. And um, so Juanine will keep that count. But as we navigate this process, we'll figure out what is the best practice for something that's a little more formalized. But does that does that sound all right if we just proceed with that for our inaugural hybrid session? I had a question. question. Ruthie, go ahead, please. Um, as Sam was saying, though, as far as process, if more of us are interested, are we more priority for being there and staff or will there be a balance of who needs to be there from staff and how many from board i know the next one is a practice one but how would you balance that out right and i it's a really good question so i don't know the answer to that i think it's something that we're going to navigate as we continue forward but i imagine that too some of your districts may have are there any districts that have already moved forward in this direction? I believe that some are already engaged in a hybrid meeting. We're going cool. I mean, it's no hybrid. It's everybody. You're all in person. Yeah. Adina is doing the a hybrid format. And in, in their case, they have the board chair, the superintendent, and the assistant superintendent present in a boardroom. In this case, it's not the original boardroom, but in a room with technology and uh, everyone participating virtually, but my guess is there are different formats that other districts have worked with. And I would just add, Madam Chair, that I think we can um, uh, keep track of, of individuals, either the board who wants to be there so we know how many board members would be in person, and then we'll, we'll work backwards from there. Um, in addition to Regina and I, um, I think our leaders um, could be in the boardroom, one of them, like if they had a major presentation, that would be fine. Uh, but most will be uh, attending virtually, so we'll make as much room as we need to for board members. Okay, thank you. And um, it just thanks everyone for your grace and patience as we navigate it out. But I am excited to take this next step just to be able to have a hybrid 
experience for the board so that some of us are in person and recognizing that we'll continue to have safe practices so that we can maintain safety for everyone involved. And um, we will, you know, likely continue to modify this a little bit as we go. It feels like we have the virtual meeting down right now, so we might as well change it up a little bit. Michelle, did you have a question? Um, I was just wondering, so protocol, does that um, include we have to wear masks the whole time? While we're in the boardroom, my understanding is yes, we will be wearing a mask. That mm -hmm. That is my understanding. Is there anything else that anyone's aware of that would indicate otherwise? So yes, we will be wearing a mask I if we're present in the room. I think and there might be some um, guidance from, I think it was from MSBA that board members are allowed to take off a mask while speaking at a board meeting if they would like to. Um, but I Thank you, we can look into that as well for some additional guidance. So I appreciate that, thank you. Any the additional? The district space covering policy does require that a mask be worn at all times while in the building. Okay. Thank you, Ann. And Adam, did you have a comment? Nope. No, Andrea got to it. Got it. Okay. And but we'll be following our district's policy regarding the face coverings, which you know it may be um, on the more you know more cautious side of MSBA, and I think and that's okay. That's we're going to follow the policy of our district. Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you all for your support in moving forward with the resolution. Uh, next AMSD update, Andrea. Um, I, well, Andrea, you continue to attend the meetings and Anne, I believe you are also at the meetings. Is that accurate? Do we have any other members of the 287 board who are also active um, participants at AMSD? Ruthie. So I would invite anyone of the three of you, if you'd like to share an AMSD update? Or Andrea? I think Andrea did the last one. I'd be happy. The, the meeting. Yeah, Andrea, Anna. go ahead, please. So okay. we have our board of directors meeting tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the annual visit from Morris and Leatherman, uh, where they come and present the information they've um, gathered from their polling process, where they share information about um, what our communities um, are reporting about their feelings about politics, about school referendums, about all current events. So it's always a really interesting meeting when they come. And I think, you know, all of our member districts are members of AMSD. So since we're doing it on Zoom, if anyone is interested in attending tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m., please feel free to email me. I'd be more than happy to send you the Zoom link. It really is always a super interesting meeting. Also, they always have really good charts and material which oftentimes they don't like to share publicly on the AMSD website, just because sometimes it's sensitive information. So you kind of have to show up if you want to see it. Um, and you know, I, I could say a couple of things about the, the fact that the summer was kind of a summer of special sessions and we had special sessions that were held in June and July and August. Um, at the time of the last update I heard from Scott Kroonquist, it was unclear whether or not there would be a September special session because the reaction to the August special session, um, the Senate held a hearing to remove the labor commissioner on a party line vote. Um, but it sounds as if the governor is calling for a special session um, tomorrow to um, look at the emergency order, the executive order. Um, still have not passed a bonding bill as we get closer to the November election. The environment becomes more political, make it even harder to get the bonding bill passed. Um, as of September 1st, Minnesota has been allocated $256 million in Corona relief funds. There's still hope for additional federal funding. Um, as you may have heard over the summer, the House passed uh, the HEROES Act and the Senate passed the HEALS Act, but unfortunately the two acts are, are quite far apart at this point. Um, a couple other quick things, the Minnesota School Finance Working Group continues to meet. They've been meeting all year and are expected to give their final recommendation at the end of September. So that will be a big deal. They've done a lot of work trying to re, uh, really transform how Minnesota schools are funded. Uh, more information will be coming out on that. I think I mentioned that the AMSD election guide is available. It's really helpful. 
Amnesty website also has a grid of all the opening scenarios for all the Amnesty member districts, which is also helpful. Um, and finally, AMSD is beginning work on their 2021 legislative platform. And we'll probably be talking about that tomorrow morning. I think that's it. It's a great update. Thank you so much. And the newsletter is in the board packet. So thank you. Uh, at this point, or is there anything anyone would like to share for once around the table? Sam. A few weeks ago, uh, I attended a, an event um, put on by a nonprofit called uh, Speak Life. Uh, they had it, it was a picnic uh, event uh, free. They had bounce houses and everything like that uh, at a, um, a park in uh, Robbinsdale, down on Robbinsdale, around there. And it was actually uh, created as a 503C, uh, created by a man named Donald. I didn't get his last name. He's actually an employee of 287. And it's a nonprofit uh, geared to uh, assist uh, you know young children and high school kids, a mentorship program, and to uh, get them uh, active and to uh, help them with any kind of additional needs that they may have. They may have, and I found it a very uh, invigorating and very uh, uh, powerful uh, nonprofit. It just started about two three years ago, and um, I said, you know, I think that'd be a great opportunity for us in Robbinsdale to to uh, partner with them with our high school kids. I think that's something that we could work together as a uh, public uh, education and uh, uh, a nonprofit to uh, really uh, uplift the community. So something I just want to share with the rest of the board. Thank you. That's good back. Any additional comments or think items that anyone would like to share? So I'd like to thank everyone who presented this evening and thank everyone for being here. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded uh, by that. Was that moved um, by Adam. Adam and Heidi? <laughs> moved by Adam, seconded by Heidi. Andrea, would you please call the roll? Yes, Adam. Yeah, I. Bracky is absent. Casey. Aye. Keen is yes. Dallas. Yes. Douglas is absent. Coons. Aye. Marty. Aye. Sant. Yes. Seidel. Steve, I'm sorry I stole your motion, but I. Yeah, fine. <laughs> and Chair Neville. Yes. <laughs> the motion carries. Thank you. And Andrea, thank you once again for uh, taking the role of clerk this evening. Everyone have a good evening. We are adjourned. All right. Everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye, everyone. Happy birthday, Anne. Anne. Happy birthday, Anne. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Hi. Hi. I just had you on there. Good for you. Hello. <laughs> Have a good How night. I'm doing pretty good. 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 See, you. See you in a couple weeks. Yep. <laughs>